Orson Scott Cards, Earth Unaware. This is a 444 page book with 24 chapters. This is the first book in the prequel trilogy to Ender's Game. So if you enjoyed Ender's Game, this, this book is for you. Um, Ender's Game is about an ongoing war between humans and aliens. And this is when they make first contact. So with a lot of Orson Scott Card's book, there is a, books, there is a theme that uh, kid, we kids are more capable than we give them credit for. So the opening scene is a 15-year-old boy named Victor. His, um, he fell in love with his cousin and they live on a mining ship out in the asteroid belt. And so part of their community, their family, they can't marry within the family. So they meet up with another mining ship, another mining family, and they swap um, couples, uh, people, uh, they call it zogging, and they marry off into other families. So since Victor is falling in love with his cousin, they send his best friend slash cousin slash, you know, woman she, he fell in love with to another ship. That's the opening scene. I really like the space mining act aspect. The uh, mining ship shows up on an asteroid and collects the ice to make water and survive and get oxygen, that kind of thing, but also sends the metal to the moon on a rocket, right? The G-forces in the rocket don't matter because G-forces, you know, there's no humans on it, it's just metal. So they can send the metal to the moon, get paid, and still be out mining asteroids out in space. So I really liked that idea, that concept, that family unit, that they're all mining together, that kind of thing. This was um, really like the engineer theme. He like repairs the ship. He is a mechanic like his father. And so he's the main character that focuses. He's like the engineering main character. Lem is another main character. He's more of an entrepreneurial. Uh, he is heir to the Juke Limited throne. Uh, they are the largest company that makes mining ships, that kind of stuff all over. And he is out testing this new gravitational technology. And they're doing it out in the middle of nowhere so that people don't discover the technology and steal the corporate secrets. It turns out the closest asteroid is the asteroid that Victor's family is currently mining. So there's the conflict there. That's um, the, maybe the first third of the book is that opening conflict drama between Lem and Victor's family. Um, the third uh, main character is Wit, and this is more of a soldier perspective. So uh, really any three of the main characters, it's easy to relate to, uh, you know, usually you'll relate to one of those three categories, engineering, entrepreneuring, or uh, soldiering. Even if you, you don't identify with them, you can still relate to them. So Wit is head of the mobile operations police. They recruit from special forces throughout the world. Um, any special forces group you can think of, they take the elite of the elite and then they go around solving conflicts that, um, whereas the United Nations is more of a peacekeeping force, this is like a go into the hot zone, cool it down, you know, like take action as opposed to just peacekeeping. And here is the tie in to the overall series. Wit uh, recruits or screens Mazer Rackham. So, of course, that is a big part of the Ender's Game series. And this is the origin story there. I really liked the asteroid mining. That really appealed to me. I liked the idea of mining asteroids for metal, but also the ice. That was really cool. Another thing I enjoyed was the um, telescopes attached to each ship in, out in space. They call them the eye, and I really like that. It was really cool, like a telescope. You can kind of track objects. They say mainly for collision threats, but also that is how the original alien spaceship was detected. So really cool. Lifeline, when you leave the ship, you are connected to the ship via lifeline. It gives your suit power, oxygen is your lifeline. It gives you your life support. And I thought that was really cool. And it added a dynamic that when you go to a ship that's, you know, uh, torn apart or destroyed, you know, there's lots of edges. And so you have to be careful of your lifeline. So that was pretty key there. Added a little bit of drama along the way. And the computer interface. That was another thing I really enjoyed. They have their helmets and their spacesuits. 
and they can't really click a mouse or interact with it. So where they look on the screen, they can blink and that counts as a click and they can navigate through menus all with looking and blinking. So very cool. Even in the non-space suits, I believe the mobile operations police use them. I'm not sure if it's in this one or the second book, but really cool. I really enjoyed both of those. The only thing I didn't really like is the communications interference. Um, I feel like the Earth would be able to know that it's not just a solar flare or something like that. I, I felt like they were too naive about that. And really, I know that human nature is to only fix something when it's broken, but I feel like there would be some way, like a ring of satellites or some way to do like a laser line transmission that would get around the interference. I, I just feel like if, if we spread out in all directions, that interference, you know, wouldn't, I feel like there would be like some kind of spider web ring that, that could go around the interference. I don't know, but I get it. That was part of the plot, the drama. So I totally understand it. I just, I don't know. I just felt like there was another way. So no big deal. Themes. I already talked about kids doing more than, uh, you know, adults allow them to or expect of them. Victor is the primary one, right? He's the main character, but also Edamar is the one who actually discovered the alien ship to begin with. So great book. Uh, flew through it. Highly recommend it. If you liked Ender's Game, please check it out. Great, great book, great series. And buy your books used if you can.